0 0.9 twin air it's a two cylinder which puts out 80 horsepower now let's take a good look so it has a uh, halogen fog lamps halogen headlamps Halogen uh, daytime running lights, no LED here. It's not going to be a problem, I reckon. Turn signals. The car is standing on a 175, 175.65. Uh, the car standing on 175.65. It's got 14 inch rims. Well, not rims, uh, well, it has hubcaps and uh, doesn't really, you don't really notice that there are hubcaps really, unless you take a real good look at it. But pretty much looks like they're a uh, light alloy, but they're just uh, hubcaps okay so you got the, uh, the molding wrap around tail lamps they look very good if you ask me this car even has a uh, tinted windows so now you can uh, now you can really now you can really see that the uh, windows or tinted especially from the rear they're not really dark but you can at least see that they're tinted the car doesn't have a the car doesn't have a backup camera as such but it has uh, sensors and um, it gets a chime when you uh, approach an object too closely you can see the fog lamp the backup lamp and the braking light there's quite a quite some room there let's take a look at the uh, cover so it does have a spare tire like uh, most cars these days no uh, 60 40 split it's just one piece twin air twin air turbo as they call it don't expect too much of it 0 to 62 in about 12 seconds and the top speed of uh, 1 on 10 miles per hour but uh, I have to tell you performance is not something that you worry about when you buy a car like this it's more about practicality has to be economic has to fit in, into tight spaces and do its job in mainly the city I reckon You're not going to take this thing up from coast to coast or whatever. You could, but I wouldn't really recommend it. Because we all know a Fiat Pana is a city car. Okay, let's get in the car. So we're inside the uh, Fiat Panda. Let's just take a quick look at it. The seats, if you ask me, um, they are a bit hard, but it doesn't really matter. The dashboard, two-tone, kind of stands out, the way they uh, made it look. And um, the funny thing is the uh, handbrake itself, it's kind of... It's kind of big it's kind of out of out of the ordinary the way they shaped it 
And that's the thing with the uh, Italian cars. They're always just a little, little bit different than the rest. And that's quite charming if you ask me. So uh, here's how the uh, key fob looks like. <clears throat> Pretty regular. Nothing strange here, nothing fancy. All right, I'll switch it on. So, um, the dashboard when it's lit, here's how it kind of looks amber. The, uh, the gauges there are, well, not really round. They're more or less square and then rounded off. And there you have the uh, infotainment system. Oh, I forgot to mention. You got the board computer right here. Pretty basic. So you got the uh, infotainment system right here. Pretty basic as well. Not really uh, nothing fancy. Nothing fancy, just, uh, well, you know, stuff that you need to know. So then you have the radio. Pretty basic as well. Volume up, volume down. And then you can just adjust the volume and the steering wheel as well. Right here with this, uh, with this toggle switch. Okay, that's pretty much it as far as the volume goes. And then you can search right here. And then you, you can even uh, sync your telephone with this uh, device and you can pick it up here. Into conversation, Major it's got a voice command button. And that's pretty much it. So now we're going to go through the um, climate control, air conditioning, whatever. So you have here, let's turn that thing on quickly. Right here. Up and down. Air conditioning. Auto. Recir recirculation. Turn it off. Turn it on again. Higher. Lower. Then uh, defrogger, defroster. Defrogger, defroster. Directions front down and then that's pretty much it here you have uh, the controls for the power window if you just press it a little longer it goes up all the way down automatically if you press it briefly It goes down just a little bit for both sides, of course. They have a manually operated windows in the rear with this version. It's not something to worry about, really. And you have eco mode. You know, all, you all know what the eco mode is. You want to drive more uh, economic, whatever. And then you can press this button. ASR off. You could turn it on. I probably will prefer to leave it on. And then we have the lever. Now the funny thing is, this car is a dual logic. 
Geologic in this case means it's an automatic transmission, which you can also operate manually with the lever for up, the gears going down. Now, if you ask me, this whole thing is more or less like a gimmick because we have each and every person that I've asked about this, um, about his or her manual transmission, and I ask, do you use the manually operated option? They all say, no, we don't. We just put it in an AM and drive from. And that's it, pretty much. We don't use this uh, this uh, this lever for going up and down. But nevertheless, they just uh, leave it there. So the uh, seats, the way they go forward, is pretty uh, basic. We got a metal metal rod right here. And you can make them go up and down with this. Uh, well, I don't know I want to call it a lever. I think. So that's all pretty basic, pretty much speaks for itself. Nothing fancy. Let's just go down to the glove box. It reaches so quite deep. And then um let's go here, the power outlet. Auxiliary jack. Cup holder, here. some storage. So then we have a, a couple of buttons right here. This one's for our driving in city mode. You got the headlamp, head, head, then we got the headlamp adjustment to set. Then we have a couple of buttons right here. This one's for driving a uh, city mode. Then we got the uh, level adjustments of the lamps, headlamps here. Here you got your uh, hazard lights. Here you got your fog lamps. And then we have the rear window uh, defroster. And with this uh, specific button, you can uh, choose to not use the uh, start-stop mode that they have. And I personally don't really like this. I'm not a fan of the start-stop mode. Each time that you uh, stand in front of a stop light, then the thing switches off. It's kind of annoying if you ask me. But some people probably like it because they tend to, you know, because they tend to save some fuel. Uh, for me, it's not really an issue because how much fuel you're, you're going to save. But <clears throat> I'll leave that to uh, I'll leave that to y'all. Now here, of course, you got the trip computer. You know, pretty much uh, speaks for itself. How much you've used and your reach and whatnot. And uh, of course, lights, auto. High beam, low beam, turn signals. Here you have your uh, wipers, wiper control. And uh, the fans, air fans right here on the left. You get your dome light. No LED, just uh, regular lamps. And you got your, uh, you got your vanity mirror. And you got your vanity, you got your vanity mirror. And here as well, of course. And here you got a uh, storage for your sunglasses. Level adjustment of the uh, seat belts. Okay. Let's just uh, sit in the rear real quick now the way that i was sitting just not the way that i, that I was uh, sitting um the seat will be like here if you're even taller than that if you're even like then it's going to be very hard to to sit here if you're an adult headroom of course is okay because um 
it's got a it's got a well a high roof high roof line and then in the rear with this first you got your manually operated windows and you got some storage here and the speaker in the, the speaker in the in the door panel and you got these adjustable you got these adjustable uh, headrests so it's all good so nothing special in the rear of course you got a, you got some storage here for random items and uh, random items and you can store a bottle or whatnot or a can so we have covered that okay let's just uh take it for a drive so you're driving in this uh in this fiat panda and you really really have to get used to the fact that it's a two-cylinder because it's making a kind of like a grunting noise Especially when you, especially at a cold start, but I think when you've once you've gotten used to it, it's not that bad. It's not that big of a deal. It's just like I mentioned, you just you just have to get used to it. But once you're over that point, it's pretty much okay, I reckon. Three cylinder or the uh, four cylinder. Nevertheless, I would go for the three cylinder or the four cylinder. So I just think I just prefer a smoother ride. No matter which way you look at it, it's still a two-cylinder. So for me, um, I you know, yeah, I better have a three or four cylinder. All right. With that said, um, the car is not really slow at all. It's not fast, of course, but you don't, like I just mentioned earlier on, you don't buy this car for performance. You buy this car because it's just a practical car, a practical a little car. To get around with and to take your kids to school and go to a soccer club or whatever and um so in that aspect it's okay car there is of course a, a lot of competition in this uh, segment um the thing that this car is going for itself is that fact that it kind of stands out well not really stands out but it's it's quite different than uh let's say a, a toyota igo and the thing with toyota igo for instance is that they're trying to make it look I don't know. They try to. They they went pretty much over the top with that uh, specific model because they want to stand out as well. And that because, like I mentioned, the, the segment that they're in is quite competitive. But in any case, this car it does a job, and um, of course, it it it, um, it has a mind of its own. It's got it's got its name going for itself, and uh, and driving wise, doesn't disappoint me. Of course. Like I said, you have to get used to it. But the ride itself is quite. Once you're, once you have that, that once you have that speed, once you have uh, uh, reached a certain speed, you don't really notice that it's a two. That it's two cylinder. You don't really notice that it's a two cylinder. And um, yeah. It, matter of fact, it's kind of funny. It makes a kind of, you know, it makes a fun, a fun noise. It's quite distinguishable, but yeah. Okay, the steering of this car is just uh, really up to par. Uh, it, it feels rigid. The suspension is very good. It doesn't swerve over the road like some cars in these segments do. So that's pretty much. That's what that's uh, quite cool, I reckon. So now you press the accelerator. You see, it picks up quite good. I can assure you that. And they do have a bunch of versions so with this car you could not go for a, a bigger engine or even a 4x4 and um, so you have pretty much all the choice that you need and you can uh, customize it as well so that's a good thing as well so basically my conclusion is uh, this, uh, this, is, is an, uh, this is a good car it looks uh, well it looks it has a certain look to it even though it's something that has to be to your liking but it's not an ugly car uh, it feels it looks fresh let me just put it like that and like I said it has a certain look to it it has to be to your liking and uh, if, if it's uh, you know if you're in the market for a compact car then I would say take a look at it take it for a spin see how it does and you might even like it 
Okay, let's just wait for the uh, stoplight to turn green. And then we can see how much uh, speed it can uh, generate, generate. And we can see how fast it can accelerate. It's not going to be surprised because it's not a fast car at all. I mean, really look at it. 0 to 62 in 12 seconds is not fast by no means. Matter of fact, it's quite slow, but for a car in this segment, it's not really, I don't think it matters. If you buy a fast car, you buy a Civic Type R or Fiat 500 Abarth for that matter, if you want to stay uh, with the brand Fiat. I don't want to take it long. It's rush hour, so we're going to have to wait longer. Everybody wants to be home quick. After dinner. Right. So now I'm going to try to go fast with this car. The uh, shifting takes kind of getting used to it, like I mentioned, because uh, it, is, it doesn't have a torque converter or a, it's not a CVT, neither is it a CVT. It has a specific system designed by Fiat. Developed by Fiat Dual Logic, like I mentioned earlier on, as a sort of like a robot that takes over the uh, the manual uh, labor. When you, if you would have a, if you would, if you were to have a manual transmission, well, that's pretty much it. I've covered the whole car, inside, outside. I reckon. If you have any questions or, or remarks, just let me know. I right, take care.